Hello, my name is Connor Quinlan, and in this review, I'm going to be doing a full review of the Canon EOS T3i Rebel uh, Canon digital SLR camera. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is give an overall um, overview of the entire camera from handling to performance to features to image quality. And then finally, I'm going to give my recommendation on uh, who this camera is for and what you should do. So, the first thing I want to do is just talk about the uh, feel in the hand. Now, for uh, for uh, Canon's beginner uh, digital SLR, this feels very solid in my hand. Uh, my hands aren't very very large, so this camera feels um, nice and snug in my hand. Doesn't feel too small compared to some products from like Nikon. I found like the D5100 was a little small for my hands, but this is a much better fit, and it feels pretty solid in my hands as well. Um, another thing that I like about the body is that it has lots and lots of controls on it, uh, many more than. Uh, some models from Nikon and that makes it a lot easier and quicker to change functions with the camera so that's always a good feature. Other than that this pretty much has the exact same outlay as the T2i, the um, uh, model before this one. The only difference is this one now has a display button right here which when pressed will display the information on the back and then also it has this little green A plus mode right here. It's called Scene Intelligence Auto, which is basically another auto mode. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to really just quickly go over the new features of this camera over the um, older T2i. Now uh, there's actually not that many. This isn't a very big upgrade to the um, Canon model Rebel before this one. Um, the major differences are basically the small features that I just told you. Display button here, this new auto mode here. It also, of course, has the new swivel screen as well, which is very useful. Same uh, resolution screen and everything. Like I said, pretty much the same outlay here. Um, the screen is really virtually the only difference between the two cameras. There are a few other neat things you can do inside the camera. You can add filters. Um, you can also shoot in multiple aspects, 3 to 2, 8 by 10, 4 by 5. You can also do stuff such as rate your images, and then you can also do a snapshot movie, which is basically like compiling a bunch of clips together in the camera, which is kind of neat for HD video photography. So now what I'm going to do is talk about the performance, and basically by that I mean the AF in this camera, the autofocus performance. And the autofocus performance of this Canon is very stellar, especially for a beginner model. It focuses very fast and pretty accurate most of the time. The only thing I really have to complain about the autofocus is that it tends to be um, so quick and not very accurate um, in darker scenes and areas. I tend to find that it was, um, I would get blurry or uh, out of focus shots more often than say like a Nikon camera which would focus slower but get more accurate uh, results. Of course accuracy that happens very rarely so it's not something you have to worry about but it is definitely something to uh, that you have to think about when buying this camera. But other than that in full daylight stuff the autofocus on this is very fast, faster than the Nikons and pretty much perfect in terms of accuracy most of the time. And with respect to uh, the older model of this uh, Rebel, um, the autofocus was pretty much the same, standard 9-point autofocus with one cross type. And then finally I'm going to go on to the image quality of the camera. Now um, Nikon's uh, new digital SLRs, the D7000 and D5100, have had stellar performance at high ISO. They're really the top of the line in terms of DX camera now. Um, I really kind of expected the same from Canon, but with the new Rebel, they're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little bit better performance. They're going to have a little so that's pretty much all I have to say about this camera at the moment. Um, there are obviously probably other features that I haven't talked about, but I'm not much of a Canon user, so this is about as much as I could get done solidly and tell you. Um, now I'm going to basically give a recommendation based on what I've done. My recommendation is for those of you who may have uh, previous Rebels, such as the T2i, it's probably not really worth upgrading to something like this because you're paying a lot of money for not that many new features. And yes, although the noise performance is better, it's not spectacularly better, and it's probably not worth paying a ton of money to get uh, to upgrade to something like this. Um, for users, however, that are getting their first Canon digital SLR or are considering this camera, then it's definitely something you might want to consider. Um, it performs very well, and obviously the noise is better control. So if you don't already own, previously own a Rebel, then uh, 
I would definitely just go for the T3i in that case. Now, I'm obviously, there's other cameras that this can compare with, such as the Nikon D5100 or D3100. I'm going to have reviews of those comparisons up as well, so you can check those out to compare with other cameras, such as Nikon cameras and other Canon models as well. And this has been a full review of the Canon T3i Rebel Digital Camera.